Hello and welcome to the Mr. Brown podcast, where I reflect on my journey as an early career teacher with a special focus on mental health. I am your host, James Brown. Salutations. It's been three weeks since the last episode, a little longer than the ideal two weeks, for which I apologise. But it means I've got several things I'd like to discuss with you today. So, without further ado, the first is a journey that one of my Year 9 students has recently been on. A journey of self-improvement. She is a brilliant student. Academically gifted. The highest attaining student in the year group. And yet, despite all this, she suffers with a crippling fear of failure. And I wonder whether these two things often go hand in hand. I haven't been teaching for very long. I haven't taught many classes. But I'd be interested to hear from more experienced teachers whether the most able students have a greater fear of failure. I've had conversations about this with my student in particular, and she seems to think that it is her fear of failure, or perhaps partly due to her fear of failure, that makes her such a high attainer, which is interesting. Perhaps something to dive into a little deeper in a later episode. But anyway, even the thought of losing a single mark on a unit assessment, for example, could induce a multi-lesson meltdown for this student. A great deal of suffering for her. And so, last time this happened, I decided to set her an additional piece of homework. I asked her to write me a report on Carol Dweck's growth mindset. Now, this is something I encountered, I think, during my teacher training year. But it's a very popular idea within the psychology of motivation. The basic idea is that we should perceive getting things wrong, not as a failure or a threat, but rather as an opportunity for growth. And I like to add in the idea that we should be grateful for such opportunities. Having an opportunity to grow is a good thing. And these opportunities don't come along all the time. So when they do, we should be grateful and we should seize them with both hands. So that's the basic principle behind the growth mindset. And I set this student the additional assignment of writing a report on the growth mindset. And I thought that by exploring this idea, it could help her manage her own failure-related anxieties. I gave her to the end of the year to write the assignment, so six weeks or so. Naturally, she did it in a few days and to an incredibly high standard. But it was very much an academic exercise. As I was reading her essay, I thought, this is wonderful, an exceptional piece of writing. But is it going to make a difference when it comes to her particular mindset? The true test, I thought, will be the next time that she feels that she might have dropped a mark on an assessment. But that hardly ever happens. Her average mark for the year is close to 99%. So I wasn't sure how long we'd have to wait to see whether this essay on growth mindset had actually improved her mindset. Well, the opportunity came along sooner than anticipated. The class has recently done another unit assessment. And this student dropped one mark. Now, I emailed her before the class to let her know that this had happened because I didn't want it to come as a shock. And I have to say, I was expecting her to enter the lesson in a bit of a panic, perhaps, as she might otherwise have done. 
But she didn't. She looked annoyed with herself, but there didn't seem to be any great suffering. She wasn't panicking. And it was wonderful. I'm so proud of her. In fact, I emailed her afterwards to say how proud I was of her. Beyond all the academic progress, I would rank this among my greatest achievements as a teacher. If indeed it was the assignment that made the difference. I'm assuming it was. But I am so proud of this student. I saw a real change in the way she thought about losing a mark and the way she reacted to it. Now, as it turns out, she, in fact, didn't lose the mark. I misread her handwriting. So it turned out that she got 100% after all, as usual. But there was a good five to ten minutes there, at the start of the lesson, where that wasn't the case. She dropped one mark, as far as I was concerned, and as far as she was concerned. And she took it like a champ. So, very well done. And I've since shared this student's report on Carol Dweck's growth mindset with the head teacher. And he has invited her and myself, as a plus one, I guess, to an academic breakfast where she will have the opportunity to discuss her thoughts with the head teacher. And I think it's going to feature on the school newsletter as well. So it really is wonderful. So moving from student growth to my own personal growth, there was a faculty meeting a couple of weeks ago and I was in a grump. We have faculty meetings on a Tuesday evening and I can't really remember why, but I'd started that week badly. I think I'd been very tired on the Monday. Still struggling with sleep every so often, especially on a Sunday evening. Once I'm into the week, so I discussed this last episode that I'd had a problem with sleep last term. It was really bad last term. It, it's fine on the whole now, but just sometimes on a Sunday evening, I still struggle to go to sleep. So I was a bit grumpy on the Monday and that had seemed to bleed into the Tuesday. And we had a faculty meeting where one of my colleagues was presenting her idea for a new type of learning journey. And I couldn't immediately see the rationale behind it. It wasn't obvious to me straight away. And so I went digging for it. I was asking questions. And with hindsight, I was being rather curt and largely negative. And another one of my colleagues is very similar to me, apparently, in terms of professional personality. We both took, well, we all took the Colour Works professional personality test. It's something that all members of staff do at our school. And me and him scored very similarly. So perhaps we think along similar lines. Anyway, he was also digging for a rationale like me. And I think we kind of were bouncing off each other. Embold, 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 emboldening, emboldening, embolden, emboldening, Anyway, I think we were bouncing off one another, emboldening, emboldening one another in our negativity. I got there eventually. I think I'm going to leave that in. I'd usually edit that out, but that's the first time in a long time that I've been properly tongue-tied. I really struggled with that word. Try it yourself, emboldening. Anyway, we were emboldening one another in our negativity, and I think it became a fairly negative exercise. We were just kind of really tearing this new idea apart and we lost sight of the fact that that the intention behind it was good and pure and it was created in the spirit of improving education for our students. And it was a good idea. Just because we couldn't see it in the moment didn't mean that it didn't have its value. Anyway, my head of department had this conversation with me afterwards, for which I'm very grateful, and certainly helped me reflect on my delivery 
So I said I was in a grump at the time. That's an explan that's maybe a partial explanation for why I was negative, but it certainly isn't an excuse. It's my responsibility to to behave in a more constructive way, regardless of how I'm feeling. So that's something that I'm going to work on. I'm sure it won't be too long before I have another opportunity, before I'm in another faculty meeting, when I'm in a grump, especially that time of day. After school, it's like I've run out of decision-making power by the time it gets to three o'clock. And I do find post-school meetings quite tricky to engage with. To be honest, I find preschool meetings quite tricky to engage with as well because often because often I'm thinking about the day of teaching or I'm having a fight with the printer as happened yesterday. Anyway, that's another story. Now, before I continue with this week's podcast, I say this week like I put them out every week. Before I continue with this episode of the podcast, a quick word from my sponsor. It's me. I'm my own sponsor. But I thought I'd put my Patreon plea in the middle of the episode from now on, rather than at the end. Gives you less opportunity just to switch off when you start to feel guilty. Anyway, this episode took about three hours to produce, which is about typical. And I try to produce two episodes a month. Recently, it's been closer to one. But I try to produce two episodes a month. So if you think that work is worth the price of a coffee, two to three pounds once a month, then please consider becoming a patron. And you can help me cover the cost of producing the podcast, which currently stand at around £15 a month. That's for podcast hosting. Any contribution you can make as a patron would be greatly appreciated. Right now, on with the podcast. Oh, I should say before, I said that I'm my own sponsor. That is true. I cover most of the cost of producing the podcast at the moment, but I do have two patrons for whom I'm very grateful. One is my mother. Thank you, mum. And the other is my former mentor. Thank you both. Okay, now on with the podcast. I'd like to share a couple of funny stories with you. The first one is gross. Okay, so if you're a bit grossed out by snotty children, please skip past this bit. Okay, so it's hay fever season. I've got a lot of snotty children in my class. A lot of snivellers. Myself included, actually. I've started keeping a tissue in my pocket. It makes me feel so old. Anyway, a lot of snotty students. It was in a year seven class. This student puts his hand up and I say, yes. And he beckons me over. Doesn't say anything, just beckons me over. So I walk over to him and he says, mm-hmm. and I say, I, I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you're trying to say. He went, mm-hmm. And I was like, I still, I haven't got a clue. You're not opening your mouth. I don't know what you're saying. So he gets a piece of paper and it's very clear he's going to try to write down whatever it is he's trying to communicate to me. And after the first letter, you can see it's very clear that he has no clue how to spell whatever it is he's trying to spell. So we're at a bit of an impasse here. He tries it several times. I can't I can barely read his handwriting, let alone the word that he's trying to spell, whatever it was. So we're going backwards and forwards between him saying, mm-hmm, and then trying to write a word down that I can't, I, it's barely legible. And if it was, I don't think I'd be able to make sense of the letters and read it anyway. Thankfully, the student next to him leaned over to me and said, sir, he's got phlegm in his mouth. And I was like, oh, That's gross. I didn't say that, but of course I thought that. And he wanted to be excused to the toilet so he could go spit it out. Bless him. Oh, it was so gross. And phlegm is a really hard word to spell. Really hard word. If he'd have tried to spell it just phonetically, F-L-E-M, I'd have probably got it. 
but he was trying to spell it how phlegm is spelt and it's a ludicrously spelt word p h l e g m pelegma ludicrous the english language is ridiculous in fact i came across something quite interesting recently you can spell the word fish in english like this g h o t i let me explain i'm going off on a tangent now but tangents are enriching so you've got the g h sound from enough so g h in enough is pronounced f you've got the o in woman which makes the short i sound okay that's pronounced w uh, uh okay and then you've got the ti in nation which is pronounced sh so that means that you can spell the word fish g h o t i so yes ludicrous language the word phlegm is also spelt ludicrously and i don't blame him for struggling to spell it especially especially when he had a mouthful of phlegm that must have been quite stressful for him so that was funny and gross the second funny story year 8 class two students nattering at the back i say can we be quiet please now one of these students is on the autistic spectrum at the, at the mild end but it still it comes through every so often and and he took offence to this he often does if you catch him doing something he shouldn't be doing and you tell him to stop he sometimes takes offence this look of how dare you comes across his face so he starts arguing with me from the back of the class he says sir i wasn't talking she was talking i was telling her to be quiet whatever it was he was arguing with me and i said you're still making noise can you be quiet please so i doubled down and he did go quiet but his face dropped looked like thunder and under his breath but loud enough for us all to hear he just went oh my lord and he said it in a way that was like i was pushing his patience to the to breaking point and he was invoking god to help preserve his patience in this situation because he'd had enough of me and anyway a few year 8s in the class reacted to this with humor they thought this was a little bit funny i thought it was hilarious and i tried for a moment to not smile but i couldn't help it i smiled other year 8 students in the class took this as license to howl and they did and one girl in particular was laughing and her laugh is very infectious so that then just set me off and i couldn't i was gone i was laughing they were laughing the student in the, the student in question who said oh my lord was fine i think he found it amusing as well he didn't feel victimized or anything we spoke about it afterwards um but they were laughing i was laughing and um each time i tried to regain control i just thought about the oh my lord comment again and i couldn't do it and as long as i was still smiling i had no chance of getting that class under control i had a skit trainee in the room with me at the time and she was aghast i don't think she'd ever seen such a disorderly classroom but eventually after a minute after a good minute or so maybe longer i managed to kind of straighten my face out stop smiling put on a scowl again and and regain control of the classroom but it was just a moment of it was a minute of pure pandemonium and it was just this funny feedback loop in that i found something amusing i smiled that gave my year 8s permission in a way to laugh themselves one of whom has a very infectious laugh which made me laugh even more and then yeah it spiraled out of control now the final thing i must mention this episode is that the podcast 
has been discovered by some of my students, some of my year nine students. And they are very intrigued. I don't know how they found out. I thought that I'd kept it pretty well locked down. And I must have done really because it's been well over a year, 18 months since I've been at that school and it's taken this long for any of my students to to find it. So I have interrogated a few of them, but they haven't they haven't told me how they found out. But they're very interested, asking questions, making comments. It hasn't disrupted any learning. I don't allow those conversations to happen in the classroom, but several students have sent me emails. One student wrote me a comment just in the back of their unit assessment saying, I really like the podcast, sir, something like that. Another student emailed me saying, your podcast is good, five out of five. I love every bit of it. It is amazing, which is wonderful. And one student had listened to the episode where I talk about mental health during the holidays and how it can sometimes be tricky. When you have such a strong sense of purpose during term and then suddenly you're left adrift in the holidays, it can be tricky, or at least I sometimes find it tricky. And she sent me the most wonderful email saying how she often feels the same way in the holidays. And she said that it's important to talk to people. And she offered me various other tips about how I could look after myself during the holidays. And we also spoke about it in school. She came along one lunchtime and we had a good chat about it, which was just wonderful. I have some really caring students and I'm very grateful for them. Now, I don't know how this will change the podcast moving forward. The fact that I now know some of my students are listeners. But we will see in time. I hope to release another episode In a couple of weeks, I'll talk to you then. If you enjoyed this episode, please spread the word in person and on social media. You can follow me on Twitter at MrBrownPod or email MrBrownPod at gmail.com. Please subscribe, rate and review in your directory of choice. Please also consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash MrBrownPod and helping me cover the cost of producing the podcast. Thank you, and talk again soon.